So I run the global climate change practice at a law firm called Baker McKenzie. And yeah. Baker McKenzie is a global law firm and we do a lot of work on climate law and policy for the last 20 years. So we work with governments designing legal frameworks. We work with people who are trying to invest in, in, in climate projects. Uh, we've worked on doing a lot of work around legal tenure, around forests, who owns them, who has the rights to the carbon, how you trade those. And we do a lot of work about structuring investment into conservation. So APS is important because, number one, the region is very much a rainforest region. It has some of the most important and iconic rainforests in the world in the Asia-Pacific region. Two, I think um, it's where a lot of the donor money is focused on trying to protect those rainforests. And three, many of the countries are still grappling with how do they preserve their rainforests, how do they deal with the drivers of deforestation, and how do they get both public and private sector investment in to help them protect those rainforests. So it's a really important region. Um, the dialogues here are excellent. Um, and I think we've got a mix of public and private sector and governments and NGOs and, um, and multilaterals. And together, there's really good conversations that go on at this event. So basically, I think the theme is very important for two reasons. One, because forests are the livelihood of many people who live in those forests and so you do need to engage forest communities in order to preserve their way of life. But at the same time, um, we, we need to understand that protecting forests is in fact a good means of promoting economic growth. It, a protecting forests will not kill economic growth. If you do it in the right way and you look after forests and you also do that with, with forest communities and you make sure that degraded areas are, are reforested in a way that can produce income, then forests should be seen as a key part to economic growth. Also, without forests, we can't survive. And if we can't survive, we'll have no economic growth. So in many ways, it's a pretty simple equation. We need to protect forests to protect our, our entire economic well-being. So for example, there is, when you're talking about investing in nature, there is no immediate economic return. So if I'm an investor and I invest in a renewable energy project or I invest in a, in a transport project, I, I expect to have an, a return on that investment. If I put my money into protecting a forest, there's no immediate economic return unless the government pays me for doing so or unless there is some ability to get carbon and trade it. So there's a lot of uncertainty going ahead. We don't know how Article 6 will play out. We don't know how the international aviation program will play out. And so for investors, they need some sort of uh, regulatory and market certainty that means investing in a forest is actually going to give them some return on that investment. Number one is 